The next item on the order paper is the adjournment. The proposer of the topic will have 15 minutes, and all other speakers will have approximately six minutes. And I call Mr. Robin Newton. Can I thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, and can I thank you for staying on um, after um, such a long day, and indeed uh, the, this being the last day of, of, of the Assembly. Can I also thank the Minister uh, for being here, and I recognise that out of the Minister's time, a uh, very busy schedule, that, that he's taken this opportunity to be here. But what I think, uh, what I th what I think, Mr. Mr. Speaker, is a project that has uh, real benefits, potentially real benefits, to the entire community, um, and particular benefits to the east of the city, of Belfast City, and indeed to those parts of the uh, Lisburn and Castlereagh City, where the project runs through, and indeed then to the uh, uh, Ards and North Down uh, uh, Council area. And it's referred to as the Cumber Greenway, um, and I want to refer to it as a starting point uh, in the east of the city and indeed at Hollywood Arches, where it runs from that point through to, to Cumber, and it's got a seven miles uh, stretch free uh, from, from all traffic um, as it runs, has some traffic intersections, but indeed those are relatively small where they cross over a, a main road. But it is also designated as part of the National Cycle Network uh, running from Belfast. And it is known as the Cumber Greenway because it was the Cumber uh, rail line at, at one stage. It offers us an opportunity for traffic-free cycling, as is at this moment in time. But as such, the vast majority, or the better part of it, really is a stretch of Tar Macadam. And that stretch of Tar Macadam was led following uh, the railway surfacing being uh, dug up and indeed a major sewerage uh, pipes being laid down. So it runs from that feature uh, of Hollywood Arches, which is starting to develop as a hub around that part of the city, and a hub that has indeed uh, a large amount of, of potential, part of which is being developed by the East Belfast um, partnership, and indeed will include in the not too distant future uh, via social investment fund money, a tourism facility and a point of which, a focal point within the area. And there are other investments planned for that area. Certainly not major investments in, in, time, in, in, in the sense of what government sees, but indeed investments that will help uh, to lift the area. So it becomes that uh, starting point uh, from this side of the city. And as the Cumber Road, as it travels up towards Dundonald, it, the route diverts briefly from the old railway line along a section of river, riverside path known as Millmount Road. And Millmount Road will be actually featured uh, on Saturday as part of the uh, Second World War celebrations on where they are gathering uh, to mark what was children being taken away from East Belfast at this point of Second World War, evacuated from East Belfast, were uh, to take them from safety from, from the German bombers. And it also skirts around the River Andler, farm lanes, using a number of uh, bridges that have been reinstated. So it is virtually a flat. It is, offers wonderful opportunity for investment uh, potentially by the Minister. It would not be hard to describe it, uh, Mr. Speaker, as the potential flagship project going through the three areas uh, that, that I've spoke about. It has the potential to be a leading edge project in all that it actually brings, could bring 
uh, to the table. And indeed, for the minister, has the potential to be a jewel in the crown of his cycling uh, network. I suppose you could describe it as a top prize, um, but it needs to actually deliver the project. It needs a visionary approach, and it needs uh, potentially a cocktail of funding to be brought to the table. So what might it deliver in the longer term? It has the potential to improve, given it being brought up to standard, given that it would be brought up to standard. And the potential standard that one might think about is the standard of the Conswater Greenway, where the figures indicate that there are huge increases of people using Belfast City Council parks, river walkways, enjoying those to the extent that some of the figures are showing a 73% increase in people going past specific points. Additional people using the parkway and obviously allowing themselves to exercise, which has implications, has benefits um, to bring to the health minister. And I welcome the health minister, even though he is sitting here on the back benches today. But indeed, through walking, through the potential of cycling, uh, through the potential of jogging, uh, and indeed education uh, where it can be used, has the potential to be used for primary school, second level education schools, as is happening on the Conswater Greenway, where it has the potential to be used for the study of wildlife, uh, nature, exercises, and so on. One of the features of certainly of the Conswater Greenway and a potential feature of the Cumber Greenway is to actually get community buy-in. Whether you look at uh, a project in Northern Ireland or whether you look at a project in, in England or indeed a similar project in, in America, the key aspect of it is getting a community to buy into the project. And that means communication with, but it means selling the advantages. And the sale of the advantages where it looks at, as I've said, the, the health benefits to it, the educational benefits to it, uh, and indeed that potential for it to become a community-owned asset in which the community will invest its time in the early stages of a project to make sure to advise to what would be uh, what would benefit the community, how a community might view changes that would have to be to, to be viewed, but indeed overall success to, to, to deliver it. I was approached today by um, BBC about this this debate, and they were making the point, but dog walking in these areas is controversial because you get dog fouling and you get injuries, uh, and I do know of one gentleman using the Cumber Greenway who was knocked off his bicycle uh, and in fact ended up with, with, with a, a, a broken leg. But again, the key to it uh, is to have the areas designated where walkers can walk, where joggers can jog, where cyclists can cycle, and you get a harmonious relationship between all of the three uh, aspects delivering the, 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 the benefit. I accept that what I have, have said, um, I accept that the, it's the DSD minister that is here tonight, and I accept that if this project was to be delivered in the longer term, that it may well need a joined up approach from uh, various uh, government uh, departments. And that it would also need to be a, a, a strategic uh, need to be a strategic look at, at the overall benefits of it. Just a few minutes, Mr. Speaker, on, on uh, the uh, economy, because the, to invest this amount of money and to provide this um, type of facility um, offers us an opportunity to deliver something for the economy as well. I have referred to where there is the potential of it, where there is investment, 
around Holyrood Arches and where there is the potential of more investment. And I would argue that if, if this were to go ahead, that there would be uh, the potential for small shops around Holyrood Arches to, 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 to make a benefit. And indeed for other businesses to, to emerge as a part of the strategy. One aspect of, of, of it is the, there is the old uh, Neils Hill halt. There is still the base, the, the, the sort of platform waiting area uh, on, on the, the, the Cumber Greenway. There is, uh, right on the edge of it, uh, in the Dundonald area, there's the Hanwood Centre, which has the potential to, be, to, to exploit the, the, the walkers, the cyclists, uh, the joggers who might, might use that area, because it's a community asset that has the ability to offer much more than it is offering uh, at this moment in time. And it is actually, uh, uh, it, it's a unique in, in how it is uh, organized, how it's run, how it's funded. Uh, it doesn't receive any funding from, or didn't receive any funding from the Castlereagh Council, but indeed it is a self-sustaining project. And there would be other opportunities for other small businesses to emerge in that uh, seven mile, mile stretch. I suppose in, in terms of the minister and other ministers that might be involved, obviously there's the potential for European uh, funding. Just in, in, in closing, uh, Mr. Speaker, and I do want to refer to the minister's um, uh, strategy at this moment in time, his Northern Ireland cycling strategy. It was launched back in uh, June 2000 by uh, a photograph of a very young-looking DSD minister at that time, Mr. Peter Robinson, who, who launched it. And the strategy forward, the introduction to the strategy, just says this. Transport is an integral part of mo modern life. Increased mobility has provided enormous economic and social benefits through widened opportunities for work, leisure, and holidays, and the choice where people to live, for where people live. Having said that, it says, despite the benefits of an increased motorization, there is a growing acceptance that the price society is paying for its mobility is too high. Through short and long-term effects on health, road traffic collisions, environmental damage, and noise pollution. Here, I believe, Mr. Speaker, is a project that offers a partial solution in this area to Mr. Uh, Mr. Kennedy, the, the Minister's uh, cycling strategy. Requires a degree of joined up thinking, and Belfast City Council, I believe, may have a, a role to play. Through the Belfast Act of Travel, the Action Plan 2014 to 2020. So it's, it's, it's obviously very current. And they pose the question why active travel should be a priority? In terms, two, two aspects I'll mention. Healthier people, they're saying, being active every day by walking and cycling has many positive, positive benefits for physical health, including reducing the risk of coronary heart disease, stroke, obesity, and type 2 uh, diabetes. And finally, Mr. Speaker, I would like to say, the, it also, the active, uh, Belfast Active Travel makes this point. It makes a point about connected communities. People living in heavily trafficked streets have fewer friends in their neighbourhood when compared to people living in lightly trafficked streets. So again, the potential of the project to realise not only the Northern Ireland cycling strategy, not only the Belfast active travel strategy, but indeed also to make a major contribution to the health and well-being of, of our people, to the recreation of our people, and make a contribution to the development of, of uh, business potential, and indeed offer something to those who live in that area and further afield that would be, I think, a major flagship project. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, as a member of the Assembly for East Belfast and chairperson of the all-party group on cycling. I'm very grateful for the opportunity to speak strongly in favour 
of protecting, maintaining and developing the Cumber Greenway, uh, which is an outstanding uh, approximate seven miles of traffic-free cycle and walkway in East Belfast and beyond. I uh, thank the, the member uh, for bringing forward this debate this evening. On the wall of my Assembly office, Mr Speaker, is a letter from a young seven-year-old Oshing Doran. It was received by my predecessor and deputy leader of the Lance Party, Naomi Long, and it inspired much of her work to ensure that the Cumber Greenway was not used for the Belfast Rapid Transit bus system, as previously supported by some members of this Assembly. And it reads, Dear MLA, please let us keep our Greenway. The bees need it. We always cycle on it. The trees on it give us oxygen and blackberries. Thank you, Oshing Doran, seven years on this planet. Mr. Speaker, I think Oshing, in his tender seven years, summed up very well the importance of this traffic free cycle and walkway to the people of East Belfast and well beyond. It is an absolutely vital green space to support a natural ecosystem and sustainable active travel, which promotes health and well being, community development, and community connectivity in an age when sedentary lifestyles pose significant risk to all of the above. Mr. Speaker, I think it's essential, therefore, that we do continue to protect, maintain and develop this outstanding community asset. I'd like, uh, in my short time, to recognise the excellent work of active travel charity Sustrans towards helping us achieve this aim. In particular, the Sustrans volunteer wardens who do sterling work to help maintain and promote safe use of the Cumber Greenway. It's been a pleasure for me to support the work of Sustrans uh, with the Minister for Regional Development and Transport NI, formerly Road Service, uh, in working to ensure that we have installed Toucan crossings uh, throughout the journey of the Cumber Greenway and at key points of the Greenway to ensure walker and cyclist safety is maintained throughout the journey of the course. I'm glad uh, to support Sustrans calls for specific support from the Minister for Regional Development for the Cumber Greenway, and in particular three key ways. Number one is to see a, a master plan for the development of the Cumber Greenway, a clear strategy and a costed action plan. Two is to see modest capital improvements and three is support for the One Path initiative. Mr. Speaker, the master plan, the call for the master plan in part would be to see better connectivity to key areas uh, across the Cumber Greenway, Dundonald, Ballyhackamore, Tully Carnet, as the proposer has mentioned already this evening, the North Road, in order to ensure that the Greenway can be made even more accessible uh, to neighbourhoods and business areas in the surrounding area, and of course to the outstanding <coughs> project, the Conswater Community Greenway at the Hollywood Arches, where we're going to see a fantastic C.S. Lewis civil, Civic Square as a real nodal point uh, of both greenways in East Belfast. Indeed, ensuring greater connectivity between greenways was a key recommendation of the Committee for Regional Development Cycling Inquiry, and I'm sure something that the Minister would support as part of his cycling strategy. Two is capital improvements. Uh, there is a call to see, in particular, improvements to lighting on the Cumber Greenway in order to assist with evening travel in winter months, and the like of which is proving a real success in the other outstanding Greenway in, in East Belfast, the Conswater Community Greenway. I, I would hope that that would be the type of improvement that the, the Minister would be minded to support. Number three, Mr Speaker, is the, the One Path initiative. There are a wide range of users, uh, and that's to be welcomed on the Greenway. We have walkers, dog walkers, joggers, cyclists, uh, but we want to see a One Path initiative that will ensure proactive engagement with all users, awareness campaigns, and perhaps the provision of basic equipment to promote and ensure mutual respect and mutual understanding on the Cumber Greenway in order to deliver shared use uh, without the need for segregation uh, and to ensure safe enjoyment of this fantastic asset. Mr Speaker, if we can achieve this level of support for development on the Cumber Greenway, I think we can really maximise the immense benefit and potential of this outstanding traffic-free Greenway. It is, of course, a vital 
part of the cycle network and will be vital to the Minister's cycling strategy, but it, it can be much more than just a transport corridor. We should have a vision for the Cumber Greenway to be an outstanding natural ecosystem and a linear park to promote active lifestyles needed for health and well-being, community, tourism and economic development in East Belfast and well beyond. And I certainly hope we can hear that type of support from the Minister for Regional Development this evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I call Sammy Duke. Um, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you for uh, staying for tonight. I uh, always wanted to use one of these here anyway, so I'm glad to left it behind. Um, You're taking it home with you in case we don't get back. Um, um, could also um, thank the Minister um, um, for, for taking time out um, tonight. I um, also wanted to declare an interest that um, I'm a, a trustee with the Conswater Community Greenway and as the proposal had mentioned that um, the Hamwood Centre in Tully Carnet, I'm also a director of that. And again, I want to thank my colleague Robin Newton for bringing this amendment um, and I think it's, 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 it's very uh, uh, timely. Adjournment. Sorry. Um, as most members have said already, this uh, Cumber Greenway is a wonderful asset for the residents of East Belfast, indeed the whole of Belfast and beyond. Since it opened in 2008, the Cumber Greenway has become one of Northern Ireland's most popular walking and cycling routes. Uh, while it functions as a traffic-free commuter route, it is also used for leisure and has effectively become a linear park. Following the line of a former railway, the route goes from Cumber to East Belfast, passing through tranquil countryside with views of Stormont, Scrabble Tower and the Belfast Hills. And we all know that the, the Greenway is part of Route 99 of the National Cycle Network, linking with the new Conswater Community Greenway to connect to the Titanic Quarter and Belfast City Centre. The number and type of users of the Greenway have increased significantly, I think the Minister will, will recognise that, um, over this past number of years. Walkers, joggers, dog walkers and cyclists all use it. And interesting enough, uh, Mr Speaker, last year more than 200,000 estimated trips were made on the Cumber Greenway. 61 per cent of those people used the Greenway on weekdays, 48 per cent of people were cyclists and 46 per cent um, were pedestrians. And I um, use that on, on a regular basis uh, as well. And I've, I've certainly no, um, noticed the increase in cyclists in particular um, since the, the, the Grand Fondo and the Geo d'Italia. 24 per cent of people also use the route to commute to work, which is important. It's taken people um, off the roads as they head into work along that uh, beautiful corridor. 60, 60 per cent of people could have used the car for their journey, but they chose not to. And again, finally, 86 per cent of people said the route helped them increase their level of activity. I'm, I'm sure the um, Health Minister, he's, he's here as an MLA, but would certainly recognise that. The contribution of the, the Green Made to Belfast was recognised at our European level when it received the prestigious European Greenways Award in 2009. And Mr Speaker, I remember the, the First Minister being at the launch of the, the, um, the Conswater Community Greenway, and one of the things he did say at that launch was that that this is great for East Belfast, but the Cumber Greenway must not become the poor relation or the poor, uh, the poor cousin. So while the Cumber Greenway is a great success, there is concern that without further investment, it will fail to meet its potential. And the, neighbor, uh, the nearby Conswater Community Greenway, which is currently under construction, as been outlined before, is setting new standards for public communication corridors. It is imperative, therefore, that the Cumber Greenway is not left behind, and to prevent this happening, I certainly agree with the previous speakers. A development plan is essential. Uh, I want to congratulate the Minister um, uh, uh, and this Department of Regional Development on moving ahead with the Belfast Rapid Transport Scheme, a world-class public transport system which runs alongside the Cumber Greenway in East Belfast. Together, they have the potential to provide this area of the city with a world-class sustainable transport system and should be developed, promoted and marketed together. The Cumber Greenway is currently owned and maintained by Transport NI to road standards. I think that's one of the difficulties because 
the grass is only cut um, as, as it is uh, perceived as a road, unlike uh, many of our parks. Um, some additional maintenance is undertaken by local authorities. It is seen by local people as a park and should be developed and maintained as such, indeed similar to the Lagan Toke Path, which is part of the Lagan Valley Regional Park. The Cumber Greenway could also have as many visitors as the Lagan Valley Regional Park and if it is treated more as a linear parkway. It certainly requires, it requires tree and shrub maintenance, regular gas cutting, frequent rubbish collections and lighting. And I think that's one of the things we, we, the Minister would ask him um, to consider. Um, because certainly, my own experience with the Conswater Community Greenway, the, um, a number of the residents there initially um, didn't want any lighting. And once we, we had um, partial lighting on it, some of those residents who didn't want the lighting actually asked us to provide that lighting. So I think, uh, as my uh, colleague has said earlier on, that lighting is so essential um, for the, 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 the late nights and, and the dark nights um, during the winter. So certainly we, we need um, some sort of cost of development plan. Um, we also need um, some sort of joined up um, approach that we can. Yes, well. Thank the member for raising the issue of lighting. And from experience, he's, he's made, I think, references to Linear Park and uh, coming uh, from Bangor. It's obviously a, another Linear Park in Bangor, but obviously in terms of getting the, the lighting correct is always vitally important, not just obviously in this case for the safety of people travelling, but there's a danger that if, if you leave things simply too dark at some stage in the development of any um, of, of a Linear type park, there's always a danger of it becoming then a certain, certain haven for antisocial behaviour, and it's important that we preserve actually the best within sort of the Cumber Greenway to ensure nothing of that nature. So I think the lighting is a crucial element as well. Yeah, I thank a member um, for his intervention, and, and I would certainly agree with him. Um, certainly, we want to encourage the lighting because it also encourages, um, particularly women, um, that do use it, but, but also people who are cycling along there don't know what's um, lying on the road. So, so certainly, uh, Mr. Speaker, um, I'm delighted. Um, uh, that we, we're here tonight, and I would certainly encourage the Minister to try and help and support the, um, the development of the Cumber Greenway. Thank you very much. Simon Hamilton. Thank you very much. Uh, it's unusual to be called by that name in this House. Um, Mr. Speaker, it's a, I'm, I'm glad to be able to participate in this uh, adjournment debate, and um, can I also join with others in congratulating uh, Mr. Newton on securing this debate this evening? And I've very much enjoyed. Uh, the debate and the uh, contributions thus far. Um, um, it has been brought by a member uh, in this House representing the East Belfast constituency, um, and I think it's probably apt and appropriate that, given that the Greenway is called the, Gr the Cumber Greenway, that it has a perspective from my hometown of Cumber at the other end uh, of the Greenway. And uh, I think it, is, it has been a, a testimony to the success, and it has been a, a fantastic success, the Greenway, that Whilst it is called the Cumber Greenway, it has been something that has been shared and very much a shared ownership of the community right from the heart of Belfast right out into uh, a rural county down setting. Uh, and it has been an undeniable success since its creation um, close to a decade ago. Um, I, I have to say, I have to admit, I, I was sceptical about its success at the start. And um, that scepticism was somewhat assuaged by the fact that it was to be a temporary measure. And uh, Mr. Little alluded to the fact that it was uh, designated to be, and it had been for many years since the, the, the end of the Belfast, Belfast and County Down Railway, to be for uh, transportation purposes. It was uh, earmarked uh, to, be part, uh, to be used in, at least in part in an earlier iteration of the Belfast Rapid Transit Scheme. Uh, and I know it's a, a controversial issue in, in some parts, certainly, of, of East Belfast, but there's always a little bit of me that harbours up. Uh, uh, having believed that the, we got rid of the Belfast and County Down Railway and a commuter railway network uh, before we even had commuters, we got rid of it. I, there's still a bit of me harbours a desire to see uh, rapid transit or, or something of that kind extend out as far as Cumber and perhaps even further afield. But that's a, a discussion, certainly, for uh, another day and perhaps for another budget as well. Would um, the give way? Yes, I will, yeah. Uh, would the member agree with me that um, he mentioned about Cumber, um, but uh, people like myself also cycle from uh, Castle Road out to Cumber 
and in fact I would go in there for, for tea, tea and coffee. And, and in fact, your own first minister has actually bought me lunch in Cumber. Um, so I want to put that on answer. Thank you. I know there have been some occasions where uh, yourself and, and others have appeared at my office during, uh, looking for me during the working week, and of course I've been out working, which is a, um, uh, as you would expect. Um, but I have, I have, I have watched it um, become a great success. I've watched it being used by people both local and from further afield. The operative word being I have watched it uh, being used by people both local and further afield. And one of the things, and, and uh, I have. I suppose if I could take credit for, for one thing in this, it was the devel development of the enhancement of the Greenway. When I was uh, still a member of Ardsborough Council, uh, I got the council to agree to, to se separate a little bit of the uh, Cumber Square out for a bike rack to be put in, because I could identify having an office, a uh, constituency office in Cumber, I could identify that it was being increasingly used. People were coming down the Greenway, coming into Cumber. They had nowhere safely to park their bikes. They were parking their bike bikes in various locations uh, and using very uh, local coffee shops, perhaps even Mr. Douglas was one of those people. So the council agreed to put that uh, in, and it is a well-used uh, bike rack, and it shows that there is a uh, and that has brought, I hope, some. The Greenway has clearly brought some success for local businesses. Cumber is a destination for cycling. I think if there was, a f if, if there were maps of places to go on cycling, Cumber would be on that. It has been made unofficially that by the fact that people are are using the Greenway and finishing up, coming out of Belfast and ending up in Cumber. Um, the fact that it is a cycling destination, something that was recently affirmed by the fact that the. Um, Grand Fondo went through uh, Cumber, and it was great to, to see that happening. Um, there have been other enhancements down through, through the years, including, and I was very pleased to be able to work with officials from uh, road services at was then to ensure that um, a bridge was placed in at, at uh, Bally Rainy Road. Uh, it was a very potentially very dangerous um, crossing point uh, where people had to exit the Greenway uh, and go down to, to slipways, down one slipway and then up another. And it had the potential. And thankfully, there were there were no issues, but it had the potential to be uh, quite dangerous. And thankfully, a road service responded and put a put a bridge in. I think there is potential, and I agree wholeheartedly with uh, Mr. Newton. I agree wholeheartedly with Mr. Little and, 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 and uh, Mr. Douglas as well that there is potential to develop. The Greenway further now that it has moved almost from that temporary status to something much more permanent. Uh, and one of the ways to which we can crack that future development is, is settling this issue of, of ownership and, and responsibility. And I think the points made by Mr. Newton and Mr. Douglas around, Douglas around this are, are very pertinent. It has never really been, even though there has been a rule for many, it has never really been the Department for Regional Developments, it has never really been the responsibility of the local councils, and it has never really been the responsibility of Sustrans either. And all have mucked in, all have played their part, whether that's been in funding or in maintenance or, or in some of the developments, but nobody has really had a degree of ownership of it, and I would certainly have a view and share it with, I think, with others that perhaps the, the, the new local councils and new local authorities could play a greater role in taking it forward, perhaps as a, a, along the lines of a park as Mr Douglas has outlined. It is well used, it is diversely used. There are issues around the safety of particularly of, of people who are on bikes um, and the use of the, the, the um, Greenway by walkers and, and by uh, other users and people who are walking dogs. And I think there may well be, at some stage, if some of those safety issues can be addressed, a case for some de delineation, some voluntary delineation of use between uh, cyclists and others on the Greenway. There are issues with access, particularly at the Cumber end. Uh, there is not as much access between Millmount and Cumber as there is perhaps in, in urban Belfast, as you might expect. And whilst it might seem wrong to sort of talk about having parking close to it, there are some people who like to drive a little bit and then cycle um, using the Greenway from a point further on down its, its route. Uh, and finally, I think there is a need to consider uh, how we can link the end of the Cumber Greenway, which ends at the Cumber end, just a little shy of Cumber uh, itself, how we can link it into the, the town centre and do that in a way that's consistent with the recently published master plan. Mr. Speaker, it has the Cumber Greenway has been a, a huge success, and I think it's only right and proper that it, now that it has certainly become a more permanent fixture, that we reflect on its success. And I thank the opportunity provided by Mr. Newton to do that this evening. We reflect on that success, and we collectively then consider how we can improve this fantastic facility. And call the minister, Mr. Danny Kennedy. Mr. Uh, Speaker, thank you very much indeed. I, uh, I wasn't clear how long I have to speak. How about uh, well, that's, uh, thank you. That's very helpful. Uh, can I thank the member uh, for, for tabling this uh, debate? Can I also thank the, uh, the other members for contributing and those other members who attended 
uh, uh, for for uh, considerable distance uh, to North Down and, and particularly South Antrim uh, <laughs> uh, to hear of, uh, about the, to come and listen to the, uh, about the Cumber Greenway. Um, and it is important, uh, and I've listened with interest to the comments and, and the issues uh, raised by members. Um, can I say on a general note, uh, I've made very clear uh, my commitment to cycling. Uh, I think that's acknowledged by everyone. Um, and my commitment has been motivated by the benefits for individuals and communities that I've seen cycling deliver elsewhere. And the health and lifestyle benefits are well understood. Uh, I note the, the, the attendance of the Health Minister, um, uh, unusually called Simon Hamilton in this debate, but, um, uh, but it is the um, impact that cycling can have on social and economic fortunes of communities that is striking and in particular dynamic local communities and vibrant economies, uh, forward-looking communities with a clear sense of potential and inclusion. And I want our communities to share in that, and that's why uh, I want to promote and develop a successful cycling culture uh, in Northern Ireland. And my vision for cycling here is to give people the freedom and confidence to use the bicycle, and my ambition is to increase the number of people walking and cycling in Northern Ireland. And Clearly, it is a long-term project because change does not happen overnight uh, and it requires all of us, whether in this House, in local government uh, or communities, to work together to drive that change. Um, that's no easy task, but I look back over the last few years as Minister and I see what we've already achieved. Um, and uh, I think this is a challenge that I'm confident that we're up to because together, already I believe, we have transformed the cycling environment in Belfast, through Belfast on the Move and the Belfast Bike Share Scheme, ordinary people increasingly have the opportunity and confidence to get on their bike. And what we see is um, the centre of the city uh, with uh, huge activity uh, and huge benefits for that. And despite the challenges of the economic downturn, Belfast city centre is an increasingly vibrant and dynamic place and an attractive place to be. And so our, our cycling revolution has been a key factor in that transformation. And of course, it's not just about Belfast. We see the same in other places such as Londonderry and other towns and cities where we have invested in cycling. But we need to build on this and, and to continue our journey in particular. We need to extend the opportunities and benefits uh, out from our city centres into our communities. So that's the key objective that, uh, that I've set for my bicycle strategy, the development of greenways such as the Cumber Greenway will be an important part of delivering that vision. And uh, over the last year, I've been working with key stakeholders to develop ambitious proposals for new cycling routes, routes that will join up uh, what we have and will fill in the gaps, routes that extend out from the centre that create real opportunities to promote cycling and that link communities with key services. Um, members will know that my department is cur currently working on a uh, network plan for Belfast, bicycle network plan for Belfast. The purpose of this is to out outline my ambition to develop eight key high quality radial cycling routes for Belfast, one from each of the principal points of the compass to the city centre. And the plan will set out what we need to do to improve the existing infrastructure and develop new continuous and coherent infrastructure to bring high quality cycling routes within the reach of most people in the city. And I propose to consult on this plan uh, later this autumn. And I believe that the Cumber Greenway will form the eastern route. I'm very happy to listen to the proposals uh, made by members and the suggestions uh, made uh, this evening for its improvement. Uh, I will continue to bid for the resources to deliver an ambitious plan of investment and I look forward to supporting this chamber in doing so. Let me say that the Cumber Greenway is a well-used cycling uh, route which uh, continues to attract both walkers and cyclists. Uh, I want to build on that. I can assure members that developing the Cumber Greenway will be a key part of my proposals to develop uh, a cycling uh, network. The construction uh, of the new cycle bridge across the Ballyrainy Road by my department 
uh, referred to uh, by Mr Hamilton in, in partnership with Sustrans and Down Rural Area Partnership is a small example of my uh, commitment in this regard. My remit and that of my department covers the public road and being substantially um, off-road provision uh, I see the development of greenways as an area where there is an opportunity for local, uh, for local authorities to take ownership. And I think it's a point well made earlier in the debate that we, we've got to move, I think, to looking at creating partnerships as we move forward. Um, I believe that in the various arms of central government and local government, uh, we can usefully provide a regional strategic direction to the development of greenways, including the Cumber Greenway. Um, I set up the, uh, the Greenways Working Group last, uh, last year to work with other bodies uh, to give an overall sense of direction in order to bring individual local projects together and develop a regional Greenway network across Northern Ireland. Alongside this, uh, I've looked at opportunities to secure funding, not only from the Executive but from elsewhere, to deliver these projects. And I'm delighted to have secured opportunities for EU Greenway funding through the Interreg programme. So I think the opportunities are there. I'm conscious uh, in uh, the contribution of members, everyone is positive to this. I uh, very much welcome that. Uh, Mr Newton uh, mentioned uh, the potential for a flagship project that, that Cumber Greenway would become the jewel in the crown, uh, and I do see uh, opportunities for that. I think uh, working with the, the local authorities and other government agencies, because the benefits are, of cycling are, are not just uh, um, you know, uh, environmental or health, I, I think it's down to lifestyle, and that touches on, all, uh, on a number of government departments within uh, the executive, as well as local government. So I think Opportunities have to be opened up there. Mr Little uh, uh, reminded us of the letter that was received um, into the constituency uh, uh, office, highlighting the need to protect, at that point, the Cumber Greenway. Well, we've done that, and I think we've done more, and we need to continue to do more. Mr Douglas um, uh, has, uh, is, is a noted uh, cyclist and coffee drinker. Um, uh, and particularly in Cumber. Uh, I hope the First Minister was paying, that's all I can say, but uh, they, um, I, uh, he, he has been an, an enthusiastic champion uh, for uh, cycling, uh, not only in East Belfast, but encouraging to uh, me as Minister in, ter in terms of regional development as we seek to carry forward uh, a Northern Ireland-wide strategy, and I thank him for that. And uh, Mr Hamilton did, I think, make important points about um, Cumber uh, and how it can be developed uh, and assisted, and certainly I have no doubt that cyclists and walkers uh, contribute significantly to the local economy there, um, and I think that is important in terms of tourism uh, and other matters. And I do think that um, the, the, the issues of ownership, I think, have to be addressed. And, who might best be responsible for carrying forward such things. So, in terms of bringing this forward, I'd like to see, uh, I want to give some careful reflection to the ideas that we've heard uh, in terms of a master plan that will move things forward, not only for Cumber Greenway, but for cycling generally. Uh, and I am very pleased and optimistic that uh, as, as members pack up and, and, and prepare the, to get their buckets and spades uh, into summer recess, that we at least have left this place on a positive note tonight uh, for the potential for cycling. Uh, and I thank everyone for their contribution. Thank you. Yes, sir. And the question is that the Assembly do now adjourn. The Assembly is adjourned. Thank you, members. <laughs>